today. I thought I'd break out Heroes of the Nom, a lock and load tactical system. Uh, this There's a lot of titles in that system uh, that cover modern day or hypothetical uh, modern day, uh, World War II, and uh, the like. And so this one covers the Vietnam era, and I thought I would try this out uh, and play a scenario out of it. But I decided not to play a scenario out of the core core game, you know, which comes in this box, but thought I'd come with uh, play one out of the Lock and Load Tactical Compendium, Modern Era, 1962, The Present. This is volume four. And this is basically uh, a compendium. It has some uh, history in here, uh, some new rules uh, in here, uh, and uh, some scenarios that come with it. And I believe this came with uh, some new counters as well, and there's some rules on the new counters. It's been a while since I've uh, cracked this open. But uh, you would, in order to use the, the scenarios in here, you need to have uh, these requirements. Requirements, heroes against the Red Star, I have that. Heroes in Defiance, I do not have that. Day of Heroes, I have that. Heroes of the Nam, I have that. Uh, and uh, so any the scenarios I cannot play are any ones that use um, Heroes in Defiance. So uh, I'm, I'm limited on uh, what I can play in here. Now, um, but there's plenty of scenarios in here that, that use, uh, use units and rules from the core systems that I have. And I, as I said, I believe this came with a counter sheet, and I think it, it might have came with some new maps, possibly. It's been a while since I, again, I've cracked this open, and I just uh, put this inside my Heroes of the Nom box, because these boxes, as you can see, are relatively good size. Very thick boxes. Uh, that's one thing about Lock and Low Tactical. Their components are very nice, the big, thick boxes. Uh, you know, geomorphic maps or, or uh, multi-tile type maps, uh, and the counters are usually th thick and pre-rounded, so like all that. So what scenario did I pick for Heroes of the Nom? Well, I decided to pull from here a, a kind of a short and sweet scenario, Stay Behind. Uh, this is just uses components from uh, Heroes of the Nom, and it's a really small scenario where you have some VC... Uh, that are trying to ambush uh, uh, an LLRP team of E Company, the 50th Infantry, uh, 9th Infantry Division, and so that that infantry that team s stopped back as the, or or held back as the rest of the team was being evacuated. Now they need to be uh, extracted. So as you see right here, uh, Van Toing Peninsula, South Vietnam, August 18th. 1965, an infant battalion has been sweeping an area of 12 kilometers west of Tan An for several days with scattered resistance. Since they couldn't get the enemy to stand and fight, they were to, they were set to pull and return out, pull out and return to base. It was well known that the VC and the NVA often checked LZs after the Americans were extracted in order to collect any useful supplies. An LLRP team was set to accompany the battalion's extraction helicopters and set up to stay behind uh, ambush against any, to set up a stay behind ambush against any enemy elements that came near the LZ in a perfect ambush. All the shots fired in one side, but not all ambushes are perfect. So, and you have the setup here, the, the American team, with a, uh, has a claymore, and then you have the extraction force, which is a Huey and a Huey gunship, which come in on turn three. Oh, I don't, let me pull this down a little bit so you can see here on turn three. And then you have the VC forces. You have two uh, 143 forces with Lieutenant Dim, uh, one RPD and one RPG2. And they get some reinforcements on turns two. Uh, get a reinforcement there and on turns three, and it's only a four-turn uh, scenario, which uh, basically these uh, need to be extracted, um, and, and they can be extracted in any open space, so you gotta get out of some of this jungle, jungle well, I guess imagine this is heavy jungle, and they got light jungle, 
interspersed, but uh, they need to get out of the jungle into uh, some open space there. Now, their victory conditions are um, the uh, U.S. wins a major victory if they, not the helicopters, eliminate two or more VC multi-man uh, units or MMCs and are extracted, see uh, SSR2, Special Scenario Rule 2, without casualties. If the if the LLRPs eliminate one BC and are extracted, they win a minor victory. If they suffer a casualty, loss of, of a half-squad or spawned hero, or if only a spawned hero is extracted, they can only win a minor victory. Any other outcome results in a failed mission. So they've got to destroy somebody uh, or inflict some uh, inflict some some harm and get extracted in order to have a minor victory in this. The special scenario rules are: there's a claymore ambush which starts off. It doesn't say what unit the what hex the claymore starts in, but I imagine it starts. So I'm putting it on the border here because uh, the U.S. unit starts in uh, F2 and the VC start in F1. On this is board four here, as we can see. Uh, do, 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 do. The extraction can be in any open terrain hex. They are not considered extracted until the Huey exits the board via the east edge. And so I have, and again, I have my Huey set up here on turn three, the uh, extracting Huey, and then a gunship to uh, to take on uh, to provide uh, support. Again, if they destroy the VCs, then that's not uh, that doesn't help out on your victory. Uh, never say die if the LLRP unit is shaken and an enemy unit enters its hex for melee uh, or melee. It is not immediately eliminated. It can attempt to rally first. And then you got air support, which talks about that when it comes down on uh, turn three. So a very simple scenario. Not a lot of units in here. Uh, uh, this compendium does have some more complex scenarios, multi-map scenarios and the like. Uh, I've played a few of these. It's been a while since I played Lock and Load Tactical, uh, but uh, you know, I thought I'd, I'd break it out and dust it off and try out my skills. As I said, I have several of their titles. Um, the the ones that I have for World War II and the ones that I and in this Day of Heroes is the original Lock and Load uh, system. So it's uh, that under Mark Walker, and this this one is uh, the the new set, the Lock and Load Tactical System or LNLT system, has changed the rules a little bit and modified things and added stuff or simplified. This is the core rules uh, that I picked up. Uh, this is five O uh, bound book. It was kind of nice. I got this on uh, I got this on sale I think at one point. But you can see there's quite a bit of rules in here. Now, this probably you know, still is not caught up with Advanced Squad Leader and its rule content, but, you know, it's 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 trying. It's trying. Um, other than that, the rules of Lock and Load uh, Tactical are relatively simple. You know, in order to hit somebody, you need to spot, spot them. Um, and so you have to do a spotting check. And, you know, if you fired, then that's going to, uh, I think it'd be automatic spot. And if you move, that affects it. Um, here's your sequence of play. You know, you have a rally phase. Uh, of course, leaders help you rally uh, better than others. Uh, hold on. Did I see the, uh, this, this team doesn't have, I just want to confirm one thing here. I don't think this team had a, uh, had a leader. But you don't know. See, you can see there's quite a few scenarios in here. As you can see. Stay behind. No, there's no leader on that team. Leaders help you rally. Uh, the VC have a leader, so that might help them rally at times. Um, then you have the operation phase, which is the primary phase of back and forth, impulse movement, fire, conduct other operation. Uh, phase ends after three consecutive passes. Then you have administration uh, administrative phase where you're moving any you know counters that are on there like spotted markers or fired or or you know uh, moved or low crawl and stuff like that. I mean you can 
you can get a little tactical with this and kind of do a low crawl to, uh, it will reduce your movement, but it will help your uh, defense, uh, defensive posture and stuff like that. Uh, combat's relatively easy. You're going to be uh, attacking. You're going to be taking your firepower. And on these units, if you want to look right here, the firepower is the um, that three. That's its like inherent firepower. It's kind of hard to see there. The uh, second number is its um, range. And the third number there in red is the movement. And uh, red means something. I'll have to look that up. Uh, it has a little bit of modifier there. And then that blue six there is its morale. And then if you take a hit, you know, you're going to be reduced. As you can see there, it doesn't have any firepower or range, but it, and its movement is reduced uh, on there. And you need to rally that to, uh, that's in the shaken side. You got to rally that to get it back to uh, moving forward. The fact that you see two uh, figures on that means it's a full squad. It's a multi-man counter. And so that's what that means. Um, you know, as looking at the VC, we have, you know, they have our, our one, four, three with a four morale. So lower morale, lower firepower, and a reduced range. So, uh, but there's two of them out there. And they also have a, uh, they have some firepower with them. They have an RPD, uh, and that is its uh, firepower and range there on that unit. And they also have a RPG, and this is probably for the uh, helicopters when, uh, when they come, right? Try to take them out. So there you have the setup of this game, and I thought I would, uh, you know, I thought I'd kick it around a little bit and see what's happening here today to try to reacquaint myself with the rules of Lock and Low Tactical in, a, in an endeavor maybe to take on something a little bit more media or media scenario that has more maps and has more encounters and, and the like. So anyway, that's the setup. I'll be back to you. Thanks for watching!